of you refuse apolitical postures in your art. Mr. Baraka, you were quoted in an interview with Aaron Winslow. Of what? Aaron Winslow in the Argetist online. Mm. And this is something you said, and I thought it was remarkable. Um, quote, poetry reflects the world's concerns and the classes within the world. Your art shows what you think is good and what you think is negative. It shows what you celebrate and what you put down. When you use art openly and particularly for social struggle, it simply makes obvious which side you're on and immediately draws friends and enemies, end quote. Dr. Clark, you also mentioned in fewer but no less enthralling words these, these words here. Quote, poets are among the first witches. So suffer none to live, or suffer none to be heard, and watch them burn before your eyes, lest they recant and speak their verse in Latin. <laughs> what is the role of the poet your role in the work? Well, you know, you it's always the same role, you know, same role. You have to you have to say tell the truth. You know, the boys and Keats say a poet only has two things they have to relate to, truth and beauty. So if you, if you can handle that truth in a society made of lies and beauty in a society that praises ugliness, then you know that's the gate. <laughs> and, and it's hard on you because you must understand the, the, the uh, resistance to that. You, you have to understand that. You know. I mean, when I get, when I well, in 1967, I wrote this poem called "Black People." The judge sentenced me to three years in prison for possession of two guns and one poem, and actually quoted the poem, read the poem in his sentencing. You know what I mean? Now, <laughs> the poem, you know, I mean, the case was thrown out ultimately, but to see, to see that poem, which you call a prescription for a criminal anarchy, you know, because it talked about, you know, take all this, break the windows, take the stuff in there. So the judge actually was saying that that poem was responsible for his Negroes running them up. You know, as if, as if, do you actually believe that they came in my house and read the poem, then ran down there? <laughs> I mean, that's crazy stuff. You know? but that's and then this last thing, this uh, poet laureate thing, the same thing. They say I don't have a First Amendment right. I went down to the, uh, you know, to the to the assembly and talked to the acting governor, Cody. And so, why don't you put this poem on the wall and let us debate whether it's anti Semitic or not? Well, we don't have to do that. I said, Why not? How are you going to do this? He said, We can do anything we want to do. I mean, I read the poem, the governor calls me up and says, You've got to resign and apologize about a poem. See? Mm -hmm. So, it's not what they try to make it as. This is just, it has a force. It has a force of ideas, and the more forceful you are with it, the closer you are to what's happening and to the truth, you're going to get a reaction. You see, you're going to get a reaction. And so then I have to go through years and years of people who say anti-Semite, you know, they, mm -hmm. they go in your pocket, you lose money, you know, you, but, you know they talk bad about you. But that's the game. <laughs> you know, it's not like... If you know what's happening, then you know that's the gig. They're going to do that. You know, it's like you see a, a, a robber. The guy's robbing you. <laughs> what's he supposed to do? Well, thank you for informing on me. <laughs> no, they're going to try to kill you. They can. So that's, that, to me, we've seen these. We've seen them kill Malcolm. We've seen them kill Martin Luther King. We've seen them kill Edgar Edward. We've seen them lock people up. So you should know what they can do, and you have to be prepared the best way you can. You know, that's all I can say. You have to be prepared. What do you think about the world of the poet? Well, I guess... Um, and, and I'm wondering, too, if you, all can, if you can talk about... Um, interesting that you referenced the poem, because the poem, I think, may reference the Broad Street at some point, the one that the judge read. 
to what the, the one the poem of yours the judge read um, that they tried to use against you it made some reference to Broad Street which yeah. taught, was in Newark mm -hmm. yeah. and what about the role of the poet but, and even more specifically what, what is the role of the, the poet in Newark? Well, I guess to keep writing and reading poetry that uh, doesn't compromise uh, your resistance to, I guess, uh, the status quo or the prevailing powers. Um, I I agree with um, a Mary about having to know what may be awaiting you down the pike for your words. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, that does make me think about what I should say, you know, how I should say it where where it should be said and where can it do the most good, you know? Um, so I wanted to sort of update that poem you read mm -hmm. with, with this one. It's called um, Bulletin and it's a poem that uh, I wrote in response to seeing a, 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 a fugitive slave bulletin, you know, reading about it anyway. And it, it was in anyway, so I sort of wrote the slaves, the slave woman's response to it. Mm -hmm. So this is just part of it, and so this woman is a witch too. Mm -hmm. I'm evil, mean, and will use my knife. I dip snuff, choose tobacco, smokes a pipe. Ain't no son of Satan gonna fall on me less than he want his tail curled. Won't be intending toward no white folk. All of them's enemies. I'm headed west. I'll swim any river, maybe the Ohio, follow any star, and whoever try to take me up, maybe catching his guts as he run. So, um, those are my words. Those are our words. And, yes, you know, sort of, I sort of, okay, I dare you. I, not I dare you, you know. But the history of the Afro-American art mm -hmm. is that, you know, it's a, people ask you, why are you political? Should I be less political than who? <laughs> Fred Douglas? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Du Bois, mm -hmm. Angston, Zora Neale Hurston. You know, that's our tradition. That mm -hmm. is our tradition. These people who try to make it another tradition, that's fake. Mm -hmm. That's fake. Uh, and say, why are we like, why are we so political? We were slaves. <laughs> yeah, that's, it, ain't, it ain't mysterious. <laughs> you, right. you know, what did the slaves say? Let me go. <laughs> 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 and that's, that's the history of it right there from the mm -hmm. beginning. You know, and it's always that way, even to the day. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about the same, the same contradictions. New dress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. New names, same contradiction. You want me to be a slave. See, so you want to live one way, you want me to live another way. See? But we have to make our people understand that's a class contradiction, not only racial, that one people can live better than another people. That's a class contradiction. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? You, you can live better than me, you know. But that's, that's, that's the fight. Mm -hmm. and it's just 